Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren. I am popping in today for a quick video. Um, I actually wanted to go live and I just tried um, for a couple reasons. One, uh, the first, the main reason is I wanted to update you guys on the channel and where I've been and why my videos have been so spread far apart and um, what's going on with that and how things, how I intend to shift things in the future. And um, then this the secondary reasons were to face my fear of going live, which now I still have yet to do. <laughs> but I'm going to just record this, not edit it and put it out because it'll be really short. Um, and then also um, just learn how to do things live because I would like to be able to do some live streaming on YouTube. So that's one of the changes that I want to make. Um, I'm going to start doing some live streams um, and see how you guys like it and where you could ask questions about emotional healing. Um, we could have a conversation about it and that would be really fun, I think, really um, to have an interactive experience like that. Um, so I'm excited. The other change I'm going to make, I think I'm going to start making shorter videos. I have I have the ability to go on and on and on about emotional healing. When I make these videos um, in sessions, obviously I'm the one doing most of the listening, not, not all the talking, but I do talk. <laughs> um, but, you know, on these videos, I, I'm just very passionate about it and I talk for a long time <laughs> because I keep finding new chains to go off on tangents for, but um, I'm working on improving that. And I also want to pick up my frequency. So the reason that I've been, I've been sort of um, hiatus mode for the last few months. You've, if you've been here with me long enough, you, you know that in the beginning when I was making videos, it was like every week that I was putting one out. And starting at the end of last year, uh, the frequency went down and down um, progressively um, until it's been about a month. And the reason for that uh, is I've been highly stressed, but good stress in the end. So my healing has been accelerated by my life circumstances. And um, <laughs> so whenever you have attachment trauma, me, maybe you, uh, most of us have some kind of attachment wounding. But the thing about attachment wounding is that it is the, so attachment is with other people, relational dynamics are the cause of your trauma, but they also end up being the impetus for healing. And the way that we heal a lot of times is through relationship. Now we need to do the, uh, there's a there's a long part beforehand where we need to do this cocooning by ourselves, sort of remove a lot of relationship dynamics that are causing too much stress. So for healing emotional wounds, first you have to calm the nervous system. And sometimes that takes, if you've got severe attachment trauma, in order to heal the nervous system that is being impacted by relational dynamics, you have to cut off a lot of those, um, those relational dynamics. And so we, so a lot of times, if it's, if it's, if it's, um, if your nervous system is in like a more severe state, then we really need to sort of cloister, cocoon, you know, really just bring yourself into, you know, warm, safe, as, as safe of an environment as you can safe and safe from your nervous system's perspective, how your nervous system is reaction. And if you're getting constantly bombarded before your nervous system is calm by, um, by stresses, by these intense stresses that are triggering old wounds, you really can't heal in that state. So we've got to sort of shut off the things that are triggering your wounds and cocoon so that we can just focus, you can just focus on your nervous system, just the nervous system, calming it, calming it. So with havening, with um, tapping, if you like that better, EFT, uh, or, and but also deep breathing every day, doing slow stretches, doing incorporating light yoga, um, movement, any way that we can, meditation, any way that we can 
bring our focus back on the body, back on the body, reconnect with the body in a safe space, but also do soothing touch with the body. That can take um, a couple, uh, that can take months, but you'll see progression immediately. You'll see, you'll feel a difference very quickly, usually, but the impact of how you feel on a daily basis won't really be felt um, and for a couple months, probably. But it depends. It really, it always depends. So I'm always hesitating to say those kinds of time frames because it depends on you, on a lot of factors. Your the state of your nervous system beforehand, the level of trauma that you have, and how much it's getting activated, how much support you have in your life, what you know people you're living with, how stressful your um, your living dynamics are, work situations, um, kids. It's just it, there are so many dynamics. Um, your health, your physical health, the stress that that's putting on you. So there's so many phys- there are so many dynamics that can impact how long that takes. But that, so my point is that you have to calm the nervous system first. That is the first part of healing always. Um, but then when you want to start getting into the emotions, you do that in the beginning by yourself, usually, I mean, without relational triggers, but you want, so for emotional healing, you want to be triggered, but you want to have that ability to emotionally regulate first and not somewhat like you have a foundation because as you have more relational dynamics, you get more triggers. It's going to activate your nervous system and you need to be able to calm it back down, activate it, but calm it. And then you go sort of in, in stepwise fashion of elevating, exposing yourself to more sort of risky scenarios that are going to trigger your wounds a little more, a little more, a little more. And so one of the big, so when you have, um, depending on which parent, or maybe it's both parents, you have a, um, you have a relationship where the trauma, there were attachment, there was attachment wounding there can impact your adult relationships profoundly. I mean, profoundly and how you respond to them and how your nervous system responds. And so exposing yourself to those dynamics can accelerate your healing. As long as you have this ability to regulate your nervous system and bring it back, bring it back and you stay within this threshold of healing. So there's enough stress that's going to stretch you, but there's not too much stress that floods you, that keeps you on a cyclical pattern of fight or flight, then freeze, fight or flight, freeze, fight or flight, freeze. If you can't if get into a parasympathetic state, you're up here and you're out of the healing range. You have to be able to bring your nervous system back down to the parasympathetic state. You can go, you can go within this range, but you've got to be in it. And there has to be some flexibility in there. You, you get activated again, you get activated and then you pull it back down. You get activated and then you pull it back down. Well, so the dynamics of my life over the last nine months or so, um, when I moved, uh, has been keeping me in at right around here <laughs> um, in terms of my nervous system triggers and they're relational. And so for me, and sometimes there have there were periods when I was out of my range and it took me some time to see it for what it is what I'm dealing with, what I'm, the circumstances that I'm dealing with are like, are, are very new, but also very old. They're triggering the very old. They're triggering this dynamic that I'm dealing, that I'm currently in is so perfect. And the universe does this so well. Um, (laughs) The universe is so brilliant. It's perfectly designed to help me heal powerlessness wounds, um, blocked throat chakra, um, boundary setting. So it's all my, all three of my bottom chakras, 
safety, relational dynamics, and love, feeling loved, being loved, giving myself love, and also solar plexus energy that's like in my power, setting boundaries, uh, taking charge of what I need versus what they need. It's been very, this has just been such a challenging nine months, but, and so activating and some, and I've had some very dark periods, very, very dark, because it was taking me deep into my wounds that are around my core sense of self. However, I feel so happy and grateful to say that I feel that I have reached a place of such, oh, I'm just so, so, a really stable place in my sense of self. There has been tons of grieving my old wounds that were activated in the relationship dynamics. There have been, there has been ton of rage purged. There have been so much sh- new levels of shame that needed to be loved and, and, and moved aside. Overwhelm that needed to be loved and moved aside because overwhelm and shame are two emotions that well, overwhelm's not really an emotion, but it's an, it's an experience, are two experiences that they have, there's a lot in them. Overwhelm has a lot of fear in it. They have core emotions within them, but they're not core emotions. They're not, they're actually blocks. They're covering up the core emotions. So with shame and feelings of overwhelm, we need to, and also anxiety, we need to see it for what it is, that it's and it's blocking the other things. It's a, it's a, it's conditioned in us. It's, um, it's trying to protect us. That's how it originally formed. But right now, it's, it's not serving us. So it needs to be loved, seen and loved, appreciated and sort of moved aside. Havening, havening, and and EFT tapping or tapping is is perfect for these for shame and overwhelm. That is a great way to use them. It allows us to move them aside so that we can get to the actual emotion that's underneath. Could be fear, could be grief, could be rage, could be anger, could be... There there are a number of um, emotions that it could be underneath. It'd probably be grief. As I've said in the last video that I put out, grief is the prominent... Tears is just the prominent, prominent, prominent. It's, It's where, because we have so much loss when we have um, trauma of any kind. There's always loss. So, uh, where was I going? (laughs) This is the problem with not editing. I can't just, (laughs) I can't just have long parts of uh, periods of silence. (laughs) Um, so the past nine months, I, um, it has brought about profound healing because I was I was able to see the periods when I was out of my range. Sometimes it took a while. Uh, and realize it and really need to pull in and refocus. Nervous system, nervous system, nervous system, nervous system. Because before this dynamic happened, my nervous system felt very strong and stable. But it had to... I'm still building flexibility, resilience. The whole process is a process of healing emotional wounds, healing trauma is building resilience back into the nervous system so that you can have high stress, you can have triggers, and you can calm yourself and love yourself. It's about building this new type of relationship with yourself. And so this has been this huge stretching time for me. And until this month, July of 2023, I was not I was not out of it. I was not out of it. And I've I've waited. I've been focusing on really being sure, um, sitting with this, sitting with this feeling that's very new, where I feel exceptionally stable in my sense of self. April, May, and June were some of the toughest for me. 
I was, I sunk deep, deep, deep into grief, felt like a deep depression. And it was, um, and this is where it can get confusing. We feel what we, what we're, what we describe in our culture as depressed, but what if it's just grief? Because I was, you know, I was working really hard not to suppress any emotions. That doesn't mean I've succeeded at that. I'm sure there were there were things because this whole process is you're you're sort of straddling the line of unconscious and conscious. You're trying to make the unconscious conscious, but it takes time. And so you only get little bits at a time. The nervous system has to feel safe enough to let those up and you have to make that space and really work at it. And it's so it does it so in small bits. Um, and so I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> Ah, this is why I have a terror of going live because I've had so many circumstances in my life where the fear brings my mind to a blank. As soon as I realize that I don't have my next thought, blank. So that's why I need to practice. So next time I'm actually going to go live because it said I need, you know, 24 hours to go live. But um, after today, it, I should have that. <laughs> um, so anyway, this has brought enormous healing because of the oh the grief that's where it was the grief so i'm so sorry i'm so sorry you have to be witness to um my growth edge one of my growth edges um but the grief so i was in three months of really intense grief and it took a long time it was at my core sense of self it was by far the deepest wound i've gotten to it was so severe. My self-esteem was so low and I just needed to sit with it, be with it, be with it. I've talked about this many times on this channel because this, I find, I personally find this one of the hardest parts. Be with it, 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 be with it. until the emotion comes up to be released. And you just have to wait for it, but not just wait angrily or frustratedly, which is how I was prone to doing it years ago, <laughs> years ago. you know, two years ago, not that long. That's well, that's my propensity still, but it, I'm constantly having to remind myself to be kind, that this is about compassion. No, turn towards, turn towards that. This energy just needs compassion. That's all it needs. This is for empaths, for, for everyone, this is a hard, it's harder to do for yourself when you, whoever, no matter who you are, if you have trauma, it's harder to do for yourself than for anybody else. I can be that for somebody else so easily, bring compassion. I'm, that's what I'm really, I'm like, I'm really good at that, I, I think. <laughs> I hate saying stuff like that. <laughs> but I think I have, I think I can confidently say, <laughs> look at me say confidently while I'm like, um, covering my mouth. Anyway, I, I am, that is one of my, the things that I do well. Bring compassion and de-shame things in other people. It's really hard, as you probably know for your own, from your own experience, how hard it is to do for yourself. Because it's like, oh, well, you know, I've lived with you my whole life. You know, we feel like we can push, push ourselves around or we're just so used to it, we don't even hear the words that are happening. Well, at the end of June, um, by the middle to, well, June had a lot of, had a lot of purges. So I got to the core emotion in June and I had a lot of grieving purges and just crying and crying, deep tears, deep tears, along with those words, those words of, that are like channeled inner child. I'm speaking the words that I that needed to be spoken to the caregiver. I'm not telling my caregiver. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to them in in spirit in just I'm channeling them by myself in my room or in my car. What are the things that you need to say? When those words come out with the emotion, that is when healing happens. 
That is when healing happens, when you're holding a safe state, a safe space for yourself as well. That's where healing happens. Um, and I can't even tell you the, the lift in the past month. It's almost odd. I'm, I'm like, I'm sort of getting to know myself. It's weird. I, I feel like, um, well, one of the biggest moments for me, uh, I had a huge realization a few weeks ago for the first time in my adult life. I was able to actually enjoy, let myself enjoy my life, enjoy the moments, challenging or not, just and have so much gratitude without having to work at it. Because that's what this process has been for me. It's been just working at it, working at it. And I've had bouts of having like for these huge heart opening experiences, but then it would close down again. More root chakra, more sacral chakra, wound healing, wound healing, wound healing. Because if the if there's there are significant wounds in the bottom two chakras, your heart chakra is closed. It, it's not, it doesn't feel safe to open up because our hearts are really vulnerable when they're open. Um, and it knows, our body knows that it's not safe enough in here. Um, so this moment of being able to enjoy life, what I it's I can't even I can't even really describe what it was, but it, it was huge for me, and I I feel this weight, this huge, humongous weight lifted, and I don't feel imprisoned. It's like the cage. Almost well, a significant level of the amount of the cage has has lifted. It, it's it's very strange. I've had the incremental all through the last three years, four years. I've had incremental, you know, increases of this. But there's something that happened this time. I it it feels profound. I'm not I'm not scared of the things I used to be scared of, at least to the same degree. And <laughs> You know, I know that I'm not done. Like I've got plenty more to heal, I'm sure. Um, but it it feels big, and I I want to. I don't know. I I I just I have an intention to part of this new energy that's lifted is um, hopefully being able to make more content and talk about the healing process and and helping anybody out there as much as I can to do this healing work because I believe I have a very strong propensity to struggle with this like I my natural tendencies I like if you look at my astro anybody who's into astrology if you look at my astrology s- s- chart I have zero, I have nothing in water. No traditional planets in water. I have Pluto in a water sign. And water is emotions. Like I'm air, I'm all air, fire, and earth. And so my tendency, my the way I was, was um to just hate emo- I didn't want to go in there at all. And because I've been forced in there, thank you, Pluto, um, I've been forced into that in order to heal because my motivation to heal was greater than my <laughs> my repulsion from my emotions. I feel like it's made me actually really good at helping people through them because I struggle with it so much naturally. I've had to learn every single step there's no step in this except the cognitive part that 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 is a natural ability of mine the emotional part there's no part of that that comes naturally to me and as a result i've been through ev- i've struggled with every single step which <laughs> sounds funny to say but i feel like that is why i'm good at helping other people with it and so i want to i with this very difficult, but 
meaningful um, and accelerating nine months that I've been through. I'm just I'm feeling like I I, I want to do more. <laughs> I just want to do more. I want to I want to make more content. I want to talk about it more. I want to help you guys as much as I can. I I love I love when you guys make comments about um, like content you would like or what's helpful, what would be helpful. I would love to be figure out how to be you know more helpful than I'm 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 being. <laughs> and part of that I know is to increase content frequency cuz once a month is not not a, I I don't I don't lie. That's too much. That's too little for me. Uh, I don't know how you feel. <laughs> uh but I just this is a this is an area of our society that needs more light shown on it. That's why I'm saying this cuz I think the connection between emotions, our deep emotions, and the rest of our lives, what's manifesting in our lives, chronic illness included, is such a huge, un, ver, almost untapped. I mean, people, it's it's definitely growing. There's no question, but it's like we need every voice <laughs> to help it grow. So um, I said I was going to go shorter, and I haven't. <laughs> so I got to stop it now. I'm so sorry. I, I do this. I do this. But I practice. I've got to practice, practice, practice. So thank you for being patient with me. Um, my plan is to do more content, even if it's just um, stuff like this without editing, because the editing really bogs down the, the my process because I don't have the time to spend on vid editing long videos. So um, it's also energetically very bogging down to me. <laughs> it really depletes my energy stores. So um, I'm going to start experimenting with lives and stuff like that. We'll see how it goes. But thank you for bearing with me. Thanks for listening. And I hope that was helpful. So on the note of, you know, working with people, if you would like to work with me on your emotional healing journey, my website is down below. It's laurenvorhees.com or you can shoot me an email, lauren.j.vorhees at gmail. And um, I hope you guys are really doing wonderfully out there. It's, um, these are crazy times. I know I've said it a lot. These are, the energy is just bringing everything up to the surface. I'm sure your nervous system is feeling it. I'm sure, you, I'm sure because I've, I, I, I hear it everywhere. <laughs> so I really hope you're doing well out there. And if you need help, I'm here. Um, thanks again for bearing with me on this experimental video with no editing. <laughs> and um, I will catch you on the next video. So take care and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.